This is Twit. We should do a countdown. 10, 9, 8, oh, yeah. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take off. No, no. Come back. Go. Rod Piles here, author of so many great space books like Space 2.0, First Man on the Moon, Interplanetary Robots, Amazing right Stories, <laughs> Blueprint for a Battlestar, Editor-in-Chief of the Ad Astra Magazine. Yeah, this is the Rod Pile Pile. All the books <laughs> Ooh, in, wow. a, in a special. We keep it right, on the, right, at, right at hand so I can... Show you on the radio. Anyway, Rod, it's great to talk to you. I hope you had a wonderful uh, holiday break. Did thank you in space. Had, a, had an unscheduled visit from a guest we didn't want called COVID. But other than that, oh no, fine. are you okay? Yeah, actually, it was like the mildest cold I've ever had. It was almost nothing. Well, I, I, God, I am a believer. I know you're a hardcore right winger, but I'm a believer in vaccines. <laughs> I if you my... didn't believe in science, I'd have some problems with you, Rod. I don't think you'd be talking about space, to be honest yeah, with that, you. That booster, man. Yeah. yeah. Just, so you were already yeah. boosted, and you, you had a breakthrough, yeah. but it didn't it didn't knock you down. So that's my. Yeah, I'm sniffles. boosted, but I'm still. I don't want to, you know, because it's you don't yeah. know. Some people they get really sick. I don't know. I know. I don't want to be that one. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go around licking doorknobs, but you know, if it does happen to occur, <laughs> that's good to know. I'm glad you're okay, and the and the family all got it too, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's and everybody's by, fine though. The youngster, but yeah, yeah. everybody's okay. A right. little harder on on uh, my girlfriend's daughter because she hadn't been boosted yet, but but still nothing severe, you know. But I know it's 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 sheer luck. I mean, the booster worked, which is great, but it can affect different people differently. So I still wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's a, we live in amazing times. I mean, uh, oh my lord. I mean, a year they did it. Yeah. And frankly, uh, you know, anybody who listens to the show is interested in technology. Technology is just applied science. It's just, you know, and we're and we live in, and it's easy to take it for granted. But we live in amazing. Well, I'll give you an example. Christmas Day, they launched a space telescope. Now the Hubble, which had been up there for a decade, right? Longer. Longer. Uh, he's getting a little long in the tooth. It's we some amazing science we got out of this. Tell me about the James Webb Telescope. So this is a, a outrageous ambition. And, and as we've discussed before, this started over 20 years ago as a conversation about a large space telescope. Eh, maybe it'll cost $500 million. It's kind of expensive, but we think we can do it. And, you know, a lot of people talk about the budget creep because it got up to 10 billion, a little over 10 billion by the time it launched. But it's also an entirely different instrument than they were talking about. And you're putting this this basketball court size space telescope inside a rocket with a 15 foot by about 28 foot fairing. So everything's got to fold up, as we know. We've been talking about it. We've been hearing about it. So it's... Um, about halfway to its target now. It's, it's going to go to what they call a Lagrange point. Yeah, Lagrange 2, Sun-Earth Lagrange 2. So it's, uh, as of right now, this very moment, it's uh, 515,616 miles from Earth. Wow. So a little over halfway, about 60% to its final destination, which is 900 about 900,000 miles. And it's a weird spot in space. There's a number of these Lagrange points. They are gravitational spots where things conspire to let you maintain a very small orbit, in this case called a halo orbit, which lets you kind of stay in one place. You're orbiting around a spot in space, but it's almost like you have a little planet there, even though there's nothing there. So this is on the far side of the Earth from the sun, out beyond, well beyond lunar orbit. The gravitational forces of the Earth and the sun are balanced, so you can kind right. of just stay there, which is, for yeah. a telescope, ideal. It's ideal, and uh, unfortunately, it's too far to do an, an easy servicing mission, which is why, of course, we're so nervous about this deployment. This thing has so, to work right the first time. Right, so we're about a third of the way through the 400 and something different uh, separate activities that have to take place. Um, all then, automated, you know, all looking now. autonomous, or are they triggered? I mean, are we? Uh, they're triggered. Okay. They're triggered. Okay. So this is coming up later. What we saw before, sorry, I wasn't looking at the screen for a second. So they've already 
uh, lower. I can go back to the beginning. The you made booms. a great video, which okay. we'll post on the on the website. Thank you for giving me credit sure. in there. Well, <laughs> hey, thanks to NASA, you know. <laughs> and, so solar boom went out first, which okay. is, of course, necessary for power. And that's out now. Then they lowered these two sides. And this has all is, worked so far, right? No, no. It's all worked so far. And remember, that's just five layers of Kapton foil. So it looks substantial, but it's not. Yeah. It's like a tissue paper kite, if you remember those horrible right. things. So that's completed. Then Aren't the they tower worried about meteors or meteorites or comets um, or... They've gusseted the thing. Oh, by the way, this is very cool. This is a little, uh, in effect, almost a little solar sail. It's a panel that allows light pressure from the sun and help keep the thing oriented. So this step. So that's nice. The they don't have to use rocket. Happened. They don't have to use rocket fuel. They're just using not as much little sails, yeah. little sun sails, in effect. And then this is the tensioning step, which is what's going to happen tomorrow. And during that, so these are five layers of Kapton foil, really thin, all smooshed together. As they get tensioned, these little there, it, 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 so it's like stretching a sheet, and these five layers kind of go pink, 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 pink with with wow. with a little stretcher to pull the the layers taut, and wow. you know it, it's incredible that it that it has worked on Earth in one G. Of course, you can't you can't simulate it in zero G. Um, so that's the question. Will everything work perfectly? But if it close. doesn't, if we it, are we, is it just over? I mean, it's like if, if anything There's, goes wrong, is it just a piece of space junk? Well, they've got a variety of techniques and they learned a lot from the Galileo mission. If you remember Galileo out to Jupiter, that big antenna dish, which is also a deployable mesh, jammed up because it had been stored too long because the, the debacle with the shuttle challenger and so forth. So they learned a lot about how to unstick stuck mechanisms. So if something does jam up, they'll do a little bit of flexing and torquing and stuttering with the motors to try and get it unstuck. So they there's a lot of things they can B. do. Who, where is there's the mission, nobody out there. Where is the mission being uh, monitored? Is it at JPL or where are they? Uh, I think this one's being monitored out of, shoot. I mean, part of it's JPL, obviously, because they do all the tracking and so forth. But I, I don't remember where the There's got to be some people I know just that, uh, holding their breath. Every moment oh, of this. I oh, mean, not just some. The whole science and engineering team. Yeah, because we want... Now, what are we going to get from this? Why are we spending $10 billion well, to put so, this out there? Good question. It's it's three times the diameter, almost three times the diameter of the Hubble. Bigger, um, A bigger which mirror of means gives it much, you gather more light, more, more information. You're gathering a lot more light, which is why it had to be in separate cells. Now, let's bear in mind, if we had the Starship flying, space as a Starship, you could launch something almost this big in one piece and practically build it out of lead. You know, it wouldn't have to be this light, fragile thing, but we're not there yet. We're using right. smaller rockets. Um, but what this telescope is so special about it is it can see in the infrared. So Hubble has some infrared capability, but this has extreme infrared capability because it cools way down. The differential is, is close to 600 degrees between the hot side and the cold side of those sun shields. And in the infrared, you can look way further back in time, way further into the universe. We're talking two to 300 million years after the Big Bang. So when the first, first stars are still forming, when the first galaxies are first forming. So you're really looking at the very beginning of time. Infrared lets you look past all the dust and all the junk that's out there between us and those things, billions and billions and billions, billions of miles away. So that's that's the big thing. We always um, we always when I was a kid thought if you could just get a good enough telescope and send it far enough away, you could look back on the earth and you could see Jesus being born and you could see you know, <laughs> but this is in effect kind of what we're doing. We're looking into we're just doing it the other direction. Yeah. Billions of years in the past. Yeah. The very beginning of the universe. I mean, it's only it's unbelievable. And that's just part of what the James Webb is gonna yeah, it also will actually be able to measure atmospheres of exoplanets. So it's going to look for other other Earth-like planets, yeah. maybe yeah, even yeah. pictures of aliens. Rod yeah. Piles. Hopefully just like these, right? Space.nss.org. Thank you, Rod.